Okay, so let's take a closer look at some of our largest asteroids. Um, Ceres is the largest asteroid, Vesta is the third largest. And you can see that these are, all, well, Ceres is completely round, so it has enough uh, mass to have pulled it itself into a round shape. This is unusual for asteroids, and so this is more properly classified as a dwarf planet. Um, and then Vesta is almost round, not quite round. Um, and you can see both bodies are very heavily cratered, suggesting that they're quite old. And some of these craters are very interesting. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. But first I have a question for you about Vesta. So Vesta um, has basalt rock on its surface. So what does that composition mean? Okay, I'm seeing mostly votes for B that basalt on the surface indicates that Vesta has a differentiated interior. And that's right. So it means that Vesta must have once been volcanically active, even though it's no longer volcanically active. So this, um, you know, reminds us of the planets. It was, it's large enough to have been differentiated. And also it must have been hit by a large, uh, another large object in its past in order to cause it to be molten to allow it to differentiate. So very interesting um, differentiated asteroid. And uh, this differentiation suggests that, you know, the composition of asteroids might not be perfectly uniform throughout their bodies, right? When we look at differentiated planets, we notice that they tend to have rocky crusts and metallic cores. And so uh, it seems that Vesta has those features as well. Okay, Ceres, our other large asteroid, also has evidence of differentiation and uh, a little bit more tantalizing. It has the, these um, salt deposits. So in a crater, sometimes if uh, you know Ceres got hit by another asteroid and this caused crater, and sometimes right if that pulverizes and liquefies the material around where the crater hits, and then that can sort of backsplash up through the center of that crater. And what we see here is a salt deposit, suggesting that some of the material that sort of backsplashed was salty water. So there is some, um, you know, thought that perhaps Ceres still has significant amount, amounts of water locked under its crust. It also has other evidence of past geological activity, such as this um, four kilometer tall ice volcano. So Ceres was also once geologically active and because it's very small, it's probably cooled to the level that it, it's no longer active, just like Mars. Okay, so those are the two um, interesting differentiated asteroids. Uh, and when we look at classifying asteroids, we classify them by their materials. So those two, Ceres and Vesta, I think Ceres is considered an S-class asteroid. Vesta is considered in its own class. So these types that I'm about to tell you are a little bit simplified. But most asteroids are what we call C-type asteroids. They're made out of kind of carbonaceous material, so carbon-containing uh, minerals. And they're very dark, so they're not very reflective, um, but they are the, you know, the majority of all asteroids. So this is asteroid Matilda, an example of a C-type. Um, the S-type doesn't look very different, uh, but it's made out of silicate materials. And the main difference between the S-type and the C-type in their appearance is that the S-type is very reflective because the silicate materials are more reflective than the carbonaceous materials. Uh, this one is asteroid Ida, and this is the first asteroid uh, for which we found a moon. So there's Dactyl, its little moon. And then there is finally an M-type asteroid, and those are metallic. Uh, so they contain iron and nickel, and these are also uh, fairly bright, especially in radio. And so um, the M-type asteroids are strange um, because you think of asteroids being uh, rocky materials, you know, forming between Mars and Jupiter. How did an object form that's completely metallic rather than a mix of metal and rock, right? It turns out that those M-type materials are uh, from differentiated asteroids. So these M-type asteroids come from uh, differentiated asteroids, which have been, um, you know, collided with and torn apart. Uh, okay, so this graph also tells us some other information about the S, C, and M type asteroids. Primarily that this is, you know, the percentage of total asteroids that we're looking at. 
according to their distance from the sun. And so the C type we can see, first of all, they're the most common type of asteroid, but also those have formed a little bit farther from the sun. The S type formed closer to the sun and they're a little bit less numerous. And the M type are um, quite a bit less numerous because they're the results of collision products. So there's you know, some, quite a bit of circumstance that has to happen, just the right sequence of events to produce an M type. 